Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Dakota, Dakota Woods Outfitter. And as we all know, spring is right around the corner of the filming of this video. I do believe it was the 26th when I made this. Uh, we're just a few days away from spring, and we're already experiencing that spring weather here in the south. Um, now, of course, here in, in, in East Alabama, we do normally have a few more cold snaps that come through. So it's still important to carry a you know a decent bedroll that will get you through a 50 degree night maybe a little bit lower on some nights depending on where your geographical location in this state is um and that i'm sure ranged through for a lot of you guys it did in south carolina it did for me in west virginia and it also happened to me a few times in wyoming while i was out there so <clears throat> it's indicative to the whole to the whole country so be be sure that the last frost is really gone uh before you start dropping the lower bedrolls which we'll talk about later on the channel but that's not what we're here for today. I'm just super excited. I've got a lot of content I'm filming for you all today. And today we're talking about the 2024 set for Woodsman Firearms. Okay, now I want you all to understand that this is largely based off my experience with firearms. So understand that I have not shot every gun in existence and neither have you. Um, and I, I mean that with love. Um, so understand up front that this is largely a experienced based commentary and i do have a lot of experience with firearms i simply don't have a lot of experience with every firearm on this planet and there are plenty of firearms that i know that are out there that do significantly better than this but i can't afford them and i've never had the opportunity to buy them when i could afford them so this is what i have this puts a lot of meat on my table and this keeps a lot of people off my front door <clears throat> all that to be said let's go ahead and get this thing kicked off Last year, we went to the gun range, and I did something completely unfathomable for myself because I've never done it. I shot sub-MOA, which means sub-minute of aim, which means you're shooting a, you're, you're a one-inch group at 100 yards um, with a $300 rifle I got from my favorite pawn shop. Now, this right here is a Savage 110. As you can see, we'll go ahead and make sure that's empty. As a matter of fact, to make everybody happy, we'll just go ahead and take the bolt out while we're talking about it. Make everybody safe. Make everybody feel safe, right? <clears throat> now, this is a blonde wood stock. It's a uh, E700222. Um, so if that matters to anybody, uh, of course, it's a 270 Winchester made right here in the United States by Savage. And um, it is a Series J for anybody that is genuinely curious, okay? Um, <clears throat> now, when I got this, the front and rear iron sights were taken off and i'm actually looking to put those back on the only problem with that is the simmons scope that it came with uh is actually really good and i like the old school designs i love the old school stuff um this is good enough for me at 300 yards i can take shots uh, i understand that the cartridge can go out past 300 yards but i simply am not a 400 plus yard shooter so i don't necessarily um I'm not very good at that. You know what I mean? I've shot at 500 yards before with iron sights as a kid at a standing range. But again, when you're talking about a live animal, um, you know, they can move. It's, they can move, Corey, not Coriolis effect, but, you know, they can move. Wind, can, wind patterns can change. Uh, there may be something downrange that you didn't see. <clears throat> they may drop, etc. I'm just not competent enough to take, a, to take a game animal right now at 400 yards. So the 270 Winchester does the job for me. And I'm a very good, big fan of the blonde wood. I'm a very big fan of the uh, stock. <clears throat> and the reason why I say that is this stock is very simple, but it's not one-sided. A lot of stocks on the market today are designed for right-handed people. Of course, bolts are already the right-handed. But you'll have a little hand well here on most of your rifles nowadays. I hate those because people like myself, Southpaws, they get cheated out, if you will. And this thing does have a nice cheek rail. Um, which pairs very, very well with this Simmons, okay? Now, let's talk a little bit about the cartridge. Uh, actually, before we do that, I, I do want to talk about the bolt. I want you all to understand that this is a $300 firearm, okay? This bolt is very beat up, okay? This is from like the 80s, I do believe. This is an 80s bolt. This bolt is very loose. It's very jiggly, and it's not very smooth, okay? This is definitely one of those rifles that you hunt with um, because you gotta kind of thing. And I don't like, again, I don't hate this thing and I love this rifle. In fact, I was going to get rid of it, but I can't talk myself into it. 
Um, it is an amazing shooter. Again, I shot sub of away with this rifle and that was with uh, Remington 130 grain core locked. Um, I will say that I love that round to say the least. Um, I've taken a lot of deer with that round this year. Um, <clears throat> well, excuse me, the people I've put on deer this year that use this rifle to do so have taken a lot of deer with it. I did not personally get one for myself yet and the season has ended. So that means that I'm no longer able to procure game like that for the year. Um, all that to be said though, 270, I've shot a couple hundred rounds this year at the, at the flat range and they, they pair very, very well. The first time I ever shot it, I shot sub MOA. And ever since then, I've been shooting MOA, which is something I'm used to doing. Um, but I've never shot sub MOA in my life. So that was awesome for me as a, as a firearms enthusiast, if you will. <clears throat> Not expert, enthusiast. <laughs> so 270 Winchester Magnum. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the cartridge. Talk a little bit about this style of firearm, what it can do for you, why I picked it, why I love it today, and why I'm not getting rid of it. So to start with, the 270 Winchester is a little, in my opinion, is a step down in terms of uh, grain count from the 30 6 It's got a much more flat shooting. You know, it shoots a lot more flat, and it keeps its terminal velocity. A little bit farther out than 30-06 but do understand that you're also sending a smaller projectile so you are not going to be able to really competently take elk and everything now a lot of folks are going to get in here oh i can do that with nine years old but they don't even live in a state where there are elk or anything <laughs> you know i guess my point is this guys 98 percent of us are not going to hunt anything bigger than an elk with this okay I am looking to take some elk this year in 2024 with it, but let me explain to you something. I am training my butt off. I will have a trained firearms instructor that is also a match grade shooter teaching me how to make that competence level mine so that I can do that this year. Um, I will hopefully be going to the Cascades this year, which will be fun, so I'm taking you all with that. Um, but again, the 270 Winchester mag... Uh, excuse, excuse me, Winchester is uh, it's a great round. You can put 150 grain loads in there, and those are the two that I've dabbled with. Now, I know that there are other loads out there. I will say that when I'm hunting in the early season and there's still a lot of brush on the ground, I like to go with the 150 grain simply because there's just a lot of brush to break through, and the 270 can complete that task generally with what I'm shooting through. and I, towards the later season when you've got more opened up areas and younger bucks coming out on the rut, I'll go to 130 so I can get out a little bit farther, a little bit flatter. Um, that to be said, again, the 270 Winchester is an amazing round. It's an amazing firearm. Um, it's very easy to get a hold of 270. It's extremely competent for almost everything that most of us are going to be hunting. Now, again, I'm not telling anybody that 30 6 or 308 or... 3030 is incorrect. In fact, I aspire myself to end up getting a 3030. I've hunted most of my life with a 30 6 and a Mosin Nagant. So <laughs> I'm not telling you that those are bad rounds. And my dad owns a 3030 that I've taken a couple deer with. So yes, I'm well aware of those cartridges. And frankly, I like the 270. It's just my thing. Um, I know that it'll work well. For most game, I know that it'll work well in most environments, and that's what matters most to me because I travel outside of my area a lot. I need that range. I need that cartridge size. I need that flat shot, especially when you're in like gullies and stuff like that. If, I don't know if you've ever tried to like shoot down with a 4570 at a, at a at like a at a target, but it's very hard to do with a non-flat shooting round. And 270 is one of the most flat shooting rounds I'm aware of. Again that I can also afford. I know 6.5 Creedmoor exists, but I'm not going to sit here and spend a car payment on ammunition and firearms to make that capability. And a lot of what's on the market that has wood on it today is overpriced. I got this guy for 300 bucks from an awesome gun shop, Money Miser Pond. Go check him out. All right, guys. So the next step for me, after I've secured myself a good rifle like this one here, something that can take game at distance, something that can put a real hurting on a big target so that you can get a lot of meat in one shot. That's what I'm going with. 
Now, the next step for me is what I carry most of the time in the field in conjunction with the pistol, um, and that's a 12-gauge shotgun. Me, personally, I like the Sears and Roebuck Model M200. Now, this is a 1954 model, and it's a replica from what I've collected of a Winchester shotgun. I'll leave that model here. And uh, these are amazing firearms. The only difference between this and that, I do believe, is a few small things with the stock. <clears throat> and the fact that it says Sears and Roebuck on it, okay? Now, mine particularly, I like the two and three quarter inch shell. The reason why I like the two and three quarter as opposed to a three is, for starters, they're just a lot more readily available where I'm at. And secondly, two and three quarter shell for me, high brass load is doing everything I need. I don't live in the big wide open. I live in the south. A um, hundred yards is really pushing this thing in general. And um, I have no problem at 80 yards dumping a double-lot buck high brass with this modified choke and this 22, I think it is, barrel, 22-inch barrel, 20-inch barrel, something like that. I'll leave that right here. Um, I, I have no problem with it. And the way that this uh, is set up right here, it's very easy to send a uh, shell down range with no problem. So, um <clears throat> understand that i really like that now the only thing i can tell you about this particular shotgun that i don't recommend to new shooters to new firearms owners is the takedown is a little more aggressive than let's say a remington 870 which in my opinion is the easiest firearm on the planet to clean other than a glock um it's pretty much as easy as a glock to take apart and um this is not this has a lot more moving parts but you will notice it in the field much more smoother trigger much more smooth action, very, very reliable. And I'm telling you guys right now, the pattern that this thing produces is better than any firearm I've ever owned in terms of shotguns. It's just simply the best. And I only paid 200 bucks for it used, right? So I wanted to go ahead and bring that up, right? Again, I got this from Money Miser Pond, my favorite pawn shop in Auburn. Uh, for those of you who are in the area, go check them out. They have the best prices and they have reasonable firearms in there. All right, folks. So you're probably going to be surprised to know that this is my last long arm. Now, again, all my lever action experience was in South Carolina. My dad has a lot of lever actions, and I don't personally own a lever action. Um, but I have used lever actions for a lot of my life, as well as this single action 410. <clears throat> this has a near and dear place in my heart. And in fact, it needs to be clean because old boy has been used pretty much all month and I have not cleaned him. I'm seeing a little bit of rust right here and you get that off there. But long story short, guys, when I'm going on the move and my main goal is not procure game. Now, I want you to understand something. We're talking about one man sustenance on the channel as, as, re as of recent. And uh, the hunting side of things is its own thing but in transit when you are on a long trip or you are on a long excursion maybe you're canoeing maybe you're just exploring a new area for a weekend or a week you know maybe you got five days off and you wanted to go into you know the banky national forest and the game season is still open i'm taking this with me because small game season's open i can go ahead and take small game right but it also affords me the ability to protect myself from snakes if it is deer season, you can put a, a, a slug, a quarter ounce slug through this. I have taken a deer with a quarter ounce 410 slug out of this particular shotgun in my hand. Um, high brass loads, low brass loads. This guy right here is good for three inch and two and three quarter. And I will say that with 410, I love the three inch. The three inch. Um, two and three quarter is great too. But um, I love the three inch out of a 410. I just love the extra powder. Um now, this guy is significantly lighter and shorter, which means that I can't just take a 100-yard shot with a slug or something like that, right? This is my 50 yards and below shotgun. So this is my, I'm walking through the woods. Oh, there's a snake on the ground. I'm walking through the woods. Hey, look, there's a rabbit. Or, hey, look, there's some squirrel. Or maybe it's duck season and I get an opportunity at a duck that's flying over a pond. I will take that with this here. In fact, one of the... Only six ducks I think I've ever killed in my life was with this guy right here. Um, <clears throat> now, I've killed plenty of quail and all that with this, of course, but uh, dove, quail, all that jazz with this guy here. 
So understand that this is kind of like my in transit. Now, for those of you who just watched my video on New Woods, this is also the long arm of choice when I go into New Woods. <clears throat> and I take this with me whether or not it is hunting season. The reason why I say that is I don't know what the snake population is, and if I do get stuck out, I'd rather get in trouble for shooting a squirrel off season than die. Um, not that I'm prone to being in a situation like that, but I will say that I'm not going to put myself in one by not being able to just simply take the game whether it wants to be taken or not. Um, this is also a human deterrent. Um, when it comes to uh, people... A lot of folks don't like to mess with folks with guns, which means if you do have some kind of homeless guy, drug addict, whatever, in that patch of woods, they're probably going to leave you alone a little better than if you didn't walk around with a firearm. And do understand, with that comment being made, that you are responsible for this when you go to sleep, so secure it. Um, especially if you don't know where you're at. You don't know who's in those woods. You don't know if some weird vigilante guy that just killed somebody is off in the woods. You really don't know. Uh, which brings me to my final firearm of 2024 something that i'm carrying um something that i carry pretty much daily if i'm not on the clock i'm carrying this this is my i open carry everywhere um and uh we're gonna go ahead and talk about the old reliable here okay this is my ruger 357 new model blackhawk okay you guys saw this in a previous video and um where i talked about the 357 cartridge and a lot of folks Loved and hated that particular stuff. So, this is not all the firearms that I own. But this is what I actually find myself using in the field, which is why I'm sharing it with you. Here in the South, we have black bears. Now, I've seen a couple up in North Alabama, and apparently they've got some um, down there in Geneva Forest where I'm going to be dropped off for my 48-hour survival situation. Um, I've also seen a couple here in Tuskegee as well as tracks. Now that to be said, 357, uh, is a pretty good load for, for black bear. Uh, the 130 grain stuff you can pick up the Remington stuff. That's more or less for, uh, human defense. I'm to say at the least, uh, we'll do the job. I've killed tons of hogs with this guy right here. I've killed a few coyotes with this. I have killed an innumerable amount of hogs and coyotes, really, with this. Um, and I've deterred a few people from harming me with this. Um, I will tell you this now, guys. I live in a part of town that is not exactly... When you leave Auburn, Alabama, you're not exactly in the best place on Earth. You know what I mean? Uh, we're not at Disney World when we leave that area, if that makes sense. Um and so I do carry this for self-defense, and I carry this year-round, come hell or high water. If I can't carry this or something like it, I don't go to that place. Um, that to be said, um, 357, really good cartridge. Uh, you can hot load that to about 180 and deal with bigger bears, stuff like that. I have had an opportunity in Pennsylvania to take a bear with a 357, and um, that was a very interesting experience. And I will tell you now that I say 180 grain loaded hot as you can get it through a very hard frame like this that can handle that load. And a very heavy frame like this that can actually allow good follow-up shots, all six of them, is really indicative to survival. Um, that all to be said, folks... Um, 357, great cartridge, great caliber. And uh, these lever action, or excuse me, these revolvers, these single action revolvers are super easy to clean in the field, which means that I can take this with me every single day and not really have to worry about much. Just wipe it off with a little bit of oil. Every now and again, I take the action out and I clean the barrel and everything. But these are very easy to clean. They're very, they're very hardy as well. It's very hard to get these to not work. In my experience, I've had this thing muddy. I've had this thing rusty. I've had this thing dirty. I've had this thing sandy. I've submerged this thing. I've There's been plenty of times when I have fallen in creeks while I am fa either fallen in creeks or crossed creeks. I do a lot of creek and river crossings be because I do a lot of paleontology excursions with my buddy Big Red. Um, this guy finds himself in the water a lot. So we're going to talk a little bit about how I waterproof my ammo and stuff like that later. But... 
Guys, 357 is a great cartridge to carry. Um, I want to talk to you all real briefly about this combo. Okay, a very deadly combo. Now, I'm picking up my 410 because it's the closest rifle or the closest long arm to me. This right here is going to take every daggum thing you could ever ask of it. I'm going to take any small game I want with this 410. It's going to happen. And snake defense is a lot easier because I'm using a shot cartridge as opposed to a rifle slug, right? 357 at 50, 60 yards, 70, in my opinion, with my capability. I've seen my dad take a deer at 100 yards with this pistol right here in my hand. Um, you're going to take large game. You're going to take coyote. You're going to take... You know, you can take hogs. You can take deer with this. I've taken deer with this. You know, I don't know too much about like elk and everything, but I'm sure with a well-placed shot and the right load, you can make that happen as well. But my point is, if you can't feed yourself with this combo walking through the woods, it's not the rifle. It's either you or the environment you're in does not have food in there for you to harvest. Um, that's the simple fact of the matter. This right here is the most versatile combo anybody in any state can carry. Now, understand that if you like, if you're in the great wide open, it might make sense for you to carry a 22 as opposed to a 410 or a shotgun of some type. I do understand that there are certain areas where you're just going to be taking longer distance shots, like prairies and stuff like that. I can understand why you would go 22, 22 HMR, um, all that kind of stuff, or 22 mag. Um, so I totally understand where you guys are coming from with that. And it's simply not indicative to me. I want to wrap this up by telling you all that the 22 Magnum and the 22 Long Rifle are some of the most reliable firearms you can get for a cheap price. And a lot of folks are going to say, "Oh my God, it's 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 rimfire. It's not safe. It's not it's just not very it's not very reliable." I've had five 22 Long Rifle rounds not go off in my life. I want you to understand something. The first time I ever shot a 22 was at scouting. I went to a scouting event at Camp Horn and Wall. I shot a 1,200 round bucket. Not a single problem. The next month, my dad brought seven 550 round bricks to a gun range. Me and two other people, and my father, so three other people, Spent the entire day plinking with all types of firearms chambered in 22. Pistols, autoloaders, little brake action, stuff like that. Lever actions, bolt actions, single actions, little pop open, put one round in there, close it, little cricket 22s, if you will. Plenty of Ruger 1022s, all that kind of stuff, Marlins. No one had a single problem with the cartridge. It is. A rimfire. And I know that there are tons of people that have had issues with it. But in my experience, in my lifetime, I've had five of them not go off. And when I tell you I've shot thousands of rounds personally and seen other people shoot thousands and thousands of these daggum rounds, I individually had five mess up on me. My dad had one. In his whole life, had one not go off. Dude's 50. To make it clear, he and I shot thousands of rounds in one day. So consider his lifetime going back to when 22 was actually cheap enough to buy. <laughs> so understand that what I'm saying, folks, is if you don't see the 22 up here, don't be mad. If you don't see your caliber up here, don't be mad. Um, again, 20 gauge is a shotgun. We'll take game. 16 gauge is a shotgun. We'll take game. Etc. Um, 30 out six is a rifle cartridge. We'll take game. 320 or three, 333. I think it was somebody was mad at me about. It. I can't remember what the name. It was such a weird cartridge. I never even heard of it. I'm not saying it's not a good cartridge. It's just I personally never heard of it. Um, 243, great cartridge. On down the line, two two three even. If you've got a two two three ranch rifle or a five five six ranch rifle, I will tell you this now: I have seen that take game. I have taken a couple of deer in my life with an AR platform, and let me tell you now: I've killed more coyotes than most of you have seen in your life with an AR platform. 
it's possible. It's easily possible. It is stupidly easily possible if you just have some good shot placement and a decent cartridge in there. All right. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you all learned something, and I will see you all out in the field.